Hello friends, I think you must have seen people convulsing or getting a fit immediately after delivery. It is not so uncommon. In the last few weeks, I have seen a couple of patients who had a headache two to three days after delivery, getting severe headache, especially in the back of the head followed by loss of vision or a visual hallucination or a dimness of vision and getting a seizure or a fit, something like an epilepsy. And uh, you know this condition called posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome or something you would call it as a eclampsia or a seizure or encephalopathy related to the delivery. It's quite common. It's so common that um, you know the uh, if you get a history that uh, there is a this lady after delivery who has come with headache and fit, immediately you know that this case of a uh, press or a posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, you wouldn't think twice to diagnose this condition. And you ask them to check the blood pressure; it would be high. It will be around 120, 130, 140. It won't be so high like you know 240 by 140 like that. It will be just high. Maybe instead of 110, it will be 130. So 120, it will be 140. That's it. And uh, the patient, because suddenly there's a sudden surge. Usually after delivery, the blood pressure will be in the lower range because of the vasodilatation. It will be around 90, 100, or 110. If the blood pressure goes up beyond 120, you should be extremely careful that the patient is going to develop this particular condition called a press or posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. What are the various features? The first and the foremost is headache. They get headache, especially mild, moderate or severe, especially in the front, back or any, any part of the head can be affected. This is followed by visual loss. They, they won't see properly, there will be dimness of vision, there will be darkening, there will be you know double vision, sometimes there can be visual hallucination, something like uh, objects flying or something like that or total loss of vision called a cortical blindness. This is second manifestation. The third manifestation would be uh, in some, some, some the altered sensorium, they would be altered, they would not be talking very coherently, they were, their, their, their uh, conscious level would be you know fluctuating. They would be drowsy, irritable, stuporous, comatose, or a deep, or in deep coma. That means uh, that because of the rise ICT, rise in drug pressure, there would be seepage of blood because of the high pressure in the small arteries called capillaries. This would, uh, you know, uh, cause uh, fluid lo leakage into the brain substance like uh, white matter, and this would disturb the brain, causing a seizure. Seizure means epilepsy. So, what are the types of epilepsy? The epilepsy may be a focal, something like this, or a generalized epilepsy, or something like a stare, or some automatism, or sometimes the patient will be, you know, zombie like um, not answering properly, something what we call to say non convulsive status epilepticus. It means it is actually seizure, but it is not fully manifest, so that you would not know that it is a seizure or not. And the, the, sometimes they can have bleeding into the brain, they can be a lesion in the brain, sometimes there can be a weakness, it can be ataxia, unsteadiness, brainstem symptoms, cerebellar symptoms, frontal lobe symptoms, many, many manifestations can occur due to this particular condition called press. It is so common, it is so, what do you call that, uh, you know, abnormally common that uh, I, sh I think that if you miss this, it would be, you know, it won't look very, very nice. So, my Ideas to drive this particular condition into your head that uh, the press or the headache and seizure or epilepsy after a pregnancy after delivery is quite common. It is astonishingly common and you should never miss this condition. Always if the patient comes with headache and some uh, glimmering shimmering light or some dimness of vision or having some alteration in the sensorium or getting a seizure, immediately diagnose that the patient has got a encephalopathy or encephalopathy syndrome due to high blood pressure. The blood pressure in 30% cases may be normal, maybe 120, maybe 130. In those cases, we have to monitor the blood pressure very, very frequently, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes or 1 hour, 2 hour like that. And if the blood pressure goes up, uh, you treat anti-hypertensive, many, many anti-hypertensive, IV antibiotics, uh, in, uh, IV anti-hypertensive is there, there and you have other anti-epileptic medication and other medication to reduce the rise in recurrent pressure. Okay.
So my suggestion is that if the patient gets any such symptoms like headache, visual blurring or epilepsy, normal blood pressure or slightly abnormal blood pressure, immediately take the patient to the hospital, get admitted, maybe in the ward or in the ICU, immediately infuse all the necessary medication, keep the blood pressure low around uh, you know maybe 100 or 110 or uh, the, the consequences are very very you know dangerous it can cause a seizure can give to weakness a coma conversions and various consequences and the d disastrous consequences are related to the press so uh, i will urge all the ph physicians gynecologists and other other people who are take care of this patient that uh, if the patient develops this sort of symptoms immediately or after few days after delivery, you have to consider the diagnosis of press posterior reverse vein of the syndrome. It is ridiculously common and people are missing it uh, just like this. The moment we uh, listen to this symptom 1, 2, we know that it is a press. We do not consider any other differential diagnosis though there are different diagnosis like a seizure, they can encephalitis, uh, posterior circulation stroke or uh, deep venous thrombosis, CVT and all, but those are extremely rare. In the, in the particular clinical context, we, the first diagnosis should be a press. You can ask, uh, always ask for a MR, uh, MRI brain and maybe an MRI venogram to rule out any venous sinus thrombosis. Immediately treat the patient with antihypertensives, whether uh, to give magnesium or uh, for phosphonatoin, levetiracetam, lacosome, it's all um, up to you. There, there's no, I don't think there's a big, huge difference with the, whether you treat the magnesium, whether you treat phosphonatoin and all. The, f the crux of the problem is reduce the blood pressure to normalcy, keep it around 100 to 110 or 120. Don't uh, bring it up to, I uh, don't say that, oh, it's only 130, it's only 140, it's normal, I don't think there is press and all. It's no problem, you can still think that, but the patient would come to us in an ambulance and would be in a coma state with, a, you know, all sort of complications. So, better don't venture into this. Okay, so let me conclude here by telling you that this sort of uh, press or posterior reverse brain encephalopathy syndrome is quite common. It is so common that you should never miss it. And I urge all those people who are concerned, uh, you know, whether it's uh, doctors, their relatives, patients, their relatives and all, they should be, they should know that there is a condition called press. If you don't uh, pick it up in the proper time, this will lead to disastrous consequences. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.